I work at an abandoned military base. I know there's something they aren't telling me. Sometimes I'll find a body. Sometimes I'll hear a scream. But most of the time, the others simply disappear. When I found Annie, the only friend I ever remember having, glassy-eyed and slumped against the wall, staring up at the ceiling, I knew she had looked. She looked so peaceful. I don't think it's reversible. There's no cure. After Annie, I stopped becoming attached to my co-workers. I ignore names. Rarely talk to the others. It's just easier that way. That's what I tell myself at least. It's more palatable than the truth. But I couldn't remember them even if I tried. When I do find a body, or if someone ever returns from their shift, I have a number to call. Their cars will sit in the lot for months, rusting from the constant spray of salt water, until eventually, just like their owners, the cars too will be gone in the night. Each day at dusk, I pull into the decrepit parking lot, the uneven cement rocking my car and jostling me around as I seek out what has become my usual space. I chose it specifically because it gives me a clear line of sight to my building. My back is to the ocean and the dunes. If something was going to take me, it at least wouldn't catch me by surprise. I'm not supposed to look, but I can't imagine anything worse than it all being over before I have a chance to see what I'm spending my nights with. Most days I remember how to get here, but I'm careful to check the notes I left myself. The address is jotted down as home, work, just in case. I guess I used to get confused, which makes sense. Even now, sometimes home and work mix together in my mind, and I sit in my car wondering where I'm supposed to be. This used to be a busy military base, someone told me once, but it's been abandoned for decades. It's been reclaimed mostly by nature, but by something else too. The crumbling buildings where the families used to live are tucked far back into the state park that is full of life during the day. Most people aren't even aware they are back here. It's quite a hike to get to them. The park is beautiful and filled with tourists during the day. Who might doubt in their wildest dreams could ever imagine what goes on here after darkness falls. It's filled with something at night too. But I don't know if life is the right word for it. The sunsets are unlike anything I've seen before. Golds, reds, and oranges dance along the dunes and reflect in the choppy waters. They've taken many things from me, but never the sunsets. What always happens next to see them. Perhaps it's telling that the tourists always clear out before the sun dips below the horizon. I think we all have some innate sense of self-preservation that alerts us when we are in danger from something that we cannot perceive. It tells us, yes, if you leave now, right now, you're going to miss one hell of a sunset, but at least you'll live to see another. While I sit along the stone wall facing the sea, I see them heading to their cars. They always have a sense of urgency about them. Eyes wide, panicked by something they can't quite put their finger on. All they know is that something inside of them is screaming at them to get as far away as possible. And so they do. I have it too, the sense. From the moment I step out of my car, I can feel it. It only worsens as I walk the lonely and winding trail. The shattered windows of the surrounding housing complexes frame the blackness within like sharp teeth, and my own first instinct is to get as far away from them as possible. But I just don't have a choice. It's hard finding a steady job when you've got a record like mine. And I'm incredibly lucky. Well, at least, that's what they tell me. I can't exactly argue. So, unlike the families that get to go home together, laughing, smiling, I have to step away from the shore in moonlight and into the choking blackness of the buildings. Each night, 
I sit on the old cement floor of my building, sand that's found its way inside gently invading the crevices of my shoes, gathering in the creases of my jeans. The place always triggers such a wave of sweeping sadness whenever I walk in. Children's toys still litter the ground, some melted to the floor, others barely recognizable. But somehow, the hazy familiarity is still comforting. What little paint was left on the walls long ago bubbled up, warped. There's a blackened outline on the wall in my building that they tell me not to worry about, that it's nothing. But I'm not an idiot. I know what it means. That it serves as a permanent memorial to the person that happened to be unlucky enough to spend their final moments here. All that's left of them is the negative space they left behind. Sometimes, I dream about what must have happened here. It's always so vivid. The searing pain. Clothes melding with flesh. Everything melting. They say nothing like that ever happened here. That it's all in my head. A symptom of my work here. But I know that the things that live here only take. They do not give. Some evenings, I just sit and wait by myself in the velvety dark. But many nights, they do come. Whatever went on here resulted in something toxic that seeped into the sand. The walls, the floors. They say the people stationed here and all their families were moved to other bases. And although many left with a sickness of the body, some of the mind, they all recovered. Sometimes, though, I wonder if any of those people ever left. They don't like to be looked at, the current inhabitants of the base, I was told. If you do not acknowledge them, if you do not run from them, they will usually leave you alone. I think that is the fatal mistake the others make. They look. It's hard not to. When you're sitting in silence so absolute that it begins to eat at you, and you suddenly hear movement besides your own, and something like heavy steps across the floor. And of course, once you look, once you've seen, you have to run. No one in their right mind could stay in here alone in the dark with these things once they've seen them. I've never dared to look myself, but I can feel it once they are near me that to truly see would unravel any threads of remaining sanity I have left. Even if you don't look, they still take something from you. I try to think about small, meaningless things while I'm here. A jingle from a commercial I heard during the day. An article from a random magazine. Something I won't miss when it's gone. When I was new... I must have made a mistake and thought about my family, my life before this. Why else would there be a hole there? Sometimes I can only tell what's missing by the edges of the negative space left behind. The immense sense of something lost. The inhabitants make their way down to the sea each night and cry out mournfully to each other in an eerie call and answer. I suppose they too have lost something. Maybe that's what they are searching for, what they take from you. I wonder if they ever find it. Only when the sun comes up do you get to end your shift. I've been told they don't like the sun. Not anymore. Sometimes they come back up into the buildings while it's still dark, and they wait with you. A silent companion that you can never look upon. They grasp at me at times desperate for my acknowledgement, pallid flesh always cold, seeking. Will they still empty you of everything you have? If you sit there with your eyes squeezed shut so tight that it hurts. I wonder that every time I go back, if each shift will be my last. I don't know what my employees are getting out of this. Maybe I knew once. If I did, it's long gone now. Lost in the tall trees and whirling sands and the things that dwell here. I can guess though. 
Perhaps we are something to keep the creatures occupied. Us. The dregs of society. Rather than the tourists. All I know is that once the sun rises, the others and I nod silently at each other as we make it back to our cars. If one of us doesn't come back, well, they'll find someone new. I have a tradition when I get home. Make something to eat. Fill my head with movies, gossip magazines, anything. Review the list and add anything new that I need to remember. I wish I'd started the list earlier. This morning when I got home, I spilled my watery coffee. And while wiping it up and thinking about how I'd never get my security deposit back, I saw something under the sofa, peeking out at me. It was a photo album, clearly one I'd flipped through often based on the dog-eared pages. It made my heart ache, seeing my building in its prime, the smiling family in front of it in better times when they were still recognizable as people, before they knew what the future held for them. I had a moment of recognition, painful, fleeting. I wondered if I should leave it out where I can see it next time, if I should add it to the list. But I haven't yet. Each time I've found it before, I must always decide that that would make things too difficult, too painful, and hide it again. Why dwell on something that can't be changed? It's easier this way, I decided as I shoved it back underneath. Some things are better left forgotten.